Now, Freud was interested in the idea that mental disorders could be caused for two reasons. One would be purely bodily, like maybe a head injury, or say in the case of schizophrenia, which is a good example, or manic depressive disorder, we have reason to believe that there's something physiological going on, even though by identifying that has been very difficult. And it's probably because there isn't one form of schizophrenia. There's probably many pathways of brain injury that lead to schizophrenic-like symptoms, and there's likely not one form of manic depressive disorder either, if you think of the form as having a standard causal pathway. We know that there are, because we've done genetic studies on people who have manic depressive disorder in their family, and you can identify genes within a family that seem to be contributing to the disorder, but the problem is, is that those genes don't seem to be so then you'll take another family group with manic depressive disorder and it'll be a different genetic combination that causes that. So, so part of the reason why it's difficult to associate the, even the more biological mental disorders with, with biology all the way down is because they're so complex. And then there are other forms of, of mental disorder that don't seem to be structure at all, structural at all. They seem to have more to do with, well, let's call it the psyche. Right, and that it's more like the contents of your thought have a problem rather than the structures underlying your thought. And of course, that distinction is, is difficult to make in a fine-grained way, but you, you kind of get the point. I mean, just because there's an error in your thinking doesn't mind, really mean that the underlying biology in some sense has been compromised. It's complicated because if the error is bad enough, then it can compromise the underlying biology. But, but whatever, it's a conceptual distinction. And, Part of the conceptual distinction is, is helpful if you're trying to think, at least in part, about how you might cure it, because if you're thinking about a brain disease, then that implies a different course of treatment, at least in principle, than it does if you're thinking about a psychological disorder, where you might think about talking to someone, for example, and straightening out their thoughts or helping them learn to behave in a different way. And uh, it was really Freud who started to think that he was the first person to really posit, and this is pretty interesting, to directly posit that dialogue or conversation or speaking could be curative. And now that's another thing that people don't like to give him credit for. I mean, there wouldn't be all these helping industries, social, social work and psychology and biological psychiatry insofar as that also involves communication and counseling and all of these things. None of that would have existed in all likelihood if Freud wouldn't have made the ori original hypothesis that there was something about communication that could be curative.